Hey guys. <sighs> Welcome back. I'm already halfway up here. So let me just start with the belly shot. Ugh. Okay, so this is, uh, I feel like I look way smaller on camera. I swear I'm huge in real life. Um, this is, I just hit 33 weeks. And, but this is going to be the update for weeks 30, 31, and 32, I think. I really don't know. Um, I was going to try to get, like, beautiful for this video. Like, put on lipstick and, like, brush my hair. But this is what we're working with today. Um, it's Friday night, date night. For those of you who are new, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on YouTube. Um, but it's, like, an Instagram thing I talk about. Every other Friday, uh, my husband and I, husband, that's so weird. Um, my husband and I go to try a different restaurant. We go to ah! Okay, every other Friday night, my husband and I try a new restaurant. We've been doing this for date nights for months and months now, and we have a really good time doing it. We've literally been arguing all day about which restaurant we're gonna try today, because ha we have different things in mind that we want. And technically it's his turn, but I'm also pregnant and I'm, I'm just not wanting to go to where he wants to go. Anyways, so <laughs> hi, welcome back. I'm a little late on this video, but I'm going to jump into the app really quick. Um, baby is the size of a butternut squash. Um, but at the end of 32, she was the size of a bunch of celery, which is like similar sizes. It's saying that at 32 weeks, she can be up to four pounds. Um, I have a gross skin in like a week and a half, so I'll have a actual estimate for you guys here soon in the next update. But as far as updates about baby at the end of 32 weeks, um, what does it say about her? It's saying that baby organs are fully formed. She's doing breathing practice. Um, she's having skin changes. Um, that her skin is now opaque instead of see-through. And um, as far as the organs, they mean everything except the lungs. The lungs are not fully formed this early. So that's why if you were to go into labor around this time, you would still get the steroid shots, hopefully in time for the delivery. Um, let's talk about symptoms really quick because guys, you know, I don't like to complain about being pregnant, um, because I know that it's such a, a want and a need for a lot of people. I found out today, someone that I work with is actually going through IVF and I'm like, oh my gosh, it just takes me back to those times where I was just in such a longing for another child. And I really try to be very careful what I say around her in regards to the pregnancy because I don't want to seem like I'm ungrateful. Um, however, you guys know I'm very grateful. However, I'm dying, okay? For one, I cannot breathe. I don't know what's going on. This baby is either huge or she's positioned weird because I can't breathe, but I can still feel her down in my girly parts when she moves. I can't breathe. I have to recline at night. Um, I just, I'm not comfortable and I can walk four steps and I feel like I'm going to pass out because I can't breathe. So that's fun. And, um, bladder lasts about 35 minutes on, on average. And if I even think about a glass of water, I instantly have to go. And sometimes she moves when I really have to go and I'm really clenching to not go potty on myself. Yeah. So there's that. Um, also, the reason why I told you guys about date night in the beginning is because that's why I'm kind of hurrying. I'm trying to like get ready and get this done because I'm already late on this. And I feel like I have an obligation to make sure I get this out because I'm trying to do it in real time. Anyways, I'm scatterbrained. Um, sciatic pain, it's still there. Not as bad though. I've had a really good past three weeks. I have felt really amazing. The sciatic pain is like kind of lingering off and I'm like fingers crossed, it's almost over. Um, Braxton Hicks, still very active, not as bad as when I had to go to the hospital. And lastly, the heartburn, I live on Pepsid like it's a bag of Skittles. If I don't have Pepsid, I cannot survive the day. I'd literally take one as soon as I get up because I'm gonna need it. And I'm gonna have to take another one before we go to dinner tonight. 
like I feel like everything triggers it and I, I mean I'm a nurse so I know like what technically should be triggering it but I feel like I even think of something acidic and it's it's hurting and I I can't live my life that way I've never had heartburn in my life until I had the twins I believe when I first experienced it I had a hard time with the twins but this is magnified by one million and it like, physically it hurts like it hurts it's the weirdest feeling if you've never had heartburn it literally burns your whole like throat and esophagus and it's it's it really sucks however and this is the true like myth about pregnancy we do see hair on the ultrasound so fingers crossed it's not going to be you know for nothing in the end okay jumping into really quickly the appointments we've had so many appointments um, we've had several or twice weekly appointments now <sighs> um, trying to breathe we go on Mondays or me as in we like her and I go on Mondays we have the BPP ultrasounds and then on Thursdays we, we have NSTs however recently it's just turned into BPP, BPPs on Mondays then NST and ultrasound on Thursdays she has failed every NST that we've had so far she is quote reactive not reassuring on the nst monitor she just does not perform well um she's failed three now and we've gotten the um ultrasound immediately after and she passes usually the first 10 15 minutes with flying colors they have 30 minutes to pass um bpp is for biophysical profile i think i'm not an ob nurse you guys i'm pretty sure that's what it stands for and I'll tell you guys what they are measuring. The baby has to pass all of the components to pass. Now, we obviously have not failed one yet. I don't know if, if you fail it, if you have to go to the hospital. I try to not have those conversations because I'm trying to just focus on like what I can control right now. And um, right now I go in knowing she's most likely gonna fail the NST so I don't freak out. And when she fails, because she always does, we just walk down the ultrasound and then she passes and everything looks great. Okay, so it's saying online it's only five areas that it measures. I thought it was seven for some reason. Again, I don't work in OB. However, it says that it checks the baby's heart rate, the muscle tone, the movement of the child, the breathing and the amniotic fluid so the longest thing it takes her to pass are the practice breaths because babies don't practice breathe all the time and so they just kind of zoom into the abdomen right where the diaphragm is and they wait for the movement to show that she is practice breathing and i think the longest it's taking her to pass is like 20 minutes but still well within the 30 minute time frame and so I'm just like nervous that one of these days we're going to go in there and she's not going to pass it. And then we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, however, at the point that I'm making this video and that you're seeing it, we have roughly four weeks of pregnancy left. Um, so, I mean, we're getting like down to the wire here and two weeks from now, um, in two weeks, we go into the last two weeks of pregnancy where we're at a little bit higher of a risk for labor to come on its own. Gastroschisis babies just tend to cause the mom to go into labor because baby runs out of room um, because their body's there plus the organs on the outside or they start to go into distress because they can't move as much and it kind of like puts them into that stressed out feeling which they would catch on an NST and the ultrasound. So we have two more weeks of where I feel like I can still finish getting stuff ready and be relaxed. But the last two weeks of pregnancy, I'm just worried I'm going to become like crazy. <laughs> so um, that's where we're at. Luke has about two more weeks of me being normal before I go like absolutely nuts. Um, as far as the appointment goes, um, this appointment with the regular OB, they are the ones that will still deliver. They will handle the induction date. They will do all of the things. So basically what's gonna happen is um, they want to induce me on a certain date. I'll be 37 in a, in a couple days, 30, 37 and one or two days. I can't remember. Um, so they are looking at a specific date. However, that date is not set in stone until uh, my next appointment, which is next week. They have to schedule inductions within so many weeks. Um, that's just how the hospital here likes it. 
So at my next OB appointment, I will have that put in to be scheduled and I'll have an official date. And then that following few days later, I will have an actual, like my last, I think my last growth scan where they double check her bowel. It was starting to dilate last time. We haven't really seen it again. However, we can tell it's not severely dilated because the BBP ultrasounds, they just kind of scan over it and they can tell nothing's crazy. They just haven't actually measured it yet. And that just tells me that they can just tell by looking at it that nothing is concerning, which is amazing. Are you guys tired of listening to me talk yet? This is like the fastest I think I've ever talked through a pregnancy update. <laughs> I'm just like throwing stuff at you guys because I'm in a hurry. Um, but as far as like how I'm feeling with everything, um, again, right now, in this very moment, the whole pregnancy really, since finding out, she has really done remarkable. She is still average size for a standard baby meaning one that doesn't have anything that um, any defects or any kind of um like shortcomings in the pregnancy i don't want to say that with, with like i don't want to say it and make anyone feel like i'm saying your baby's not normal i just mean like a standard pregnancy where there are no concerning issues that come up um for her to have this she is not acting like a baby that has it um she's completely normal sized right now um honestly a, a little bit big her amniotic fluid is just plentiful there's like a ton of it in there like not too much but it's like the normal average amount um she's not showing signs of distress even on the nsts that she's failing it's not because she's having heart d cells um she's really just doing all the things of a pregnancy where there are no defects or anything like that so um, it's very interesting because I was devastated at first and I was terrified. However, she has just been very um, average other than that. So, yes, it could change at any time. However, there's no signs that anything is coming at least. And even her bowel being dilated, they said that's actually very normal. And it is very minimal dilation for babies at this um, stage of pregnancy. So... Right now, she's supposed to be small. She's supposed to have IEGR, and she doesn't have any of that right now. So, um, I'm interested to see at the last growth ultrasound. We might have another one at the end. I'm not really sure, but at the next one, we'll kind of see like where we're at for delivery as far as vaginal birth versus C-section. She has to measure a certain way for them to oh, let me have the vaginal birth um because of uh, my previous history with a shoulder dystocia so um i don't know i'm fingers are still crossed um the physician that is um delivering us however this is a new information i should have like said at the beginning the physician that is delivering us is the same physician that delivered the twins um he actually is retired <laughs> from deliveries however he was willing to um take on my case and I have never been more thankful for a situation in this pregnancy than him being willing to come out of retirement to deliver her and let us be his last delivery. I trust him wholeheartedly. He is the only reason I got my vaginal birth with the twins. If you guys remember back then, um, usually in pregnancy, you see every physician in the office and whoever's on call delivers you when you come in um, with the twins. He ended up specializing me. I only saw him and he delivered me, which gave me a sense of peace back then. But with this pregnancy, with all the unknowns, it gives me even more of a sense of peace knowing the physician that will be there. He has done this. He's seen this. He is um, older. He's been doing this for a long time. And he, like I said before, he was the only one willing to let me have a vaginal birth with my twins. So, um, and he made sure that I got it. And so I'm very thankful and I'm very excited now he will induce me on the induction date however if we were to go into labor before then um he would not be there because he's not um in the rotation to deliver babies anymore so it's a chance that we're taking obviously um but the way the pregnancy is going i don't feel like i'm going to go into labor before the induction date um, because she's not acting like a gastroschisis baby at all which I'm very thankful for. I'm wholeheartedly thankful that she's growing and she's not having any deficits that we know of. 
but how exciting that I get to have the physician that I just adore so much to deliver me and I get to be his last delivery of his entire career. I'm so excited. Um, and so if I make it to the induction date, I'm just going to be even more like relaxed. I think, I think it's just really going to help a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is the update for now. Um, the next update will have all of like the kind of like the final information as we wrap up this pregnancy, which is crazy. I feel like I just got pregnant and told you guys about it. I remember sitting in my townhouse, like telling you guys about it <laughs> and being like so scared. I had like comment moderators to like, just kind of like look at the comments to make sure no one was, you know, being crazy. And this process has just like flown by and I feel like it's just cause I'm like constantly at the doctor and like constantly having appointments that it's just really flown by. And, um, yeah, so that's going to be all for this video. Sorry. It was fast. Sorry. I'm running through it, but I want to get stuff out for you guys while living my life <laughs> and all the things. So, um, yeah, next time I see you guys, it'll be potentially the last pregnancy update which is crazy. If not, it'll be the second to last update. <gasps> also, I need to film the I'm in labor video or we're having a baby video. I'm probably going to film one that's like we're in labor just in case she does decide that we're going to go early. Um, and then the one that is like today's the day we are doing it. I don't want to give my exact date yet. Um, It'll probably probably be like a delayed like one day video type situation um, as far as it being planned. I don't know. I'm trying to make smart decisions here. So just bear with me on that. But yeah, that's going to be all you guys. Thank you so much for following along on this journey. I, I just can't believe we're at the end. And um, I'm just thankful for all of you. And, I, and again, I've already met a couple gastroschisis moms who are currently pregnant because of these videos. And that's why I wanted to be on here and do this. I just wanted to be here to talk about it and help someone else because I was petrified. And obviously mine does look like best case scenario right now. Um, but I hope this just gives solace to someone else going through it that you're not by yourself. And it's scary. Even best case scenario is still scary. But I'm here for you. And thank you for listening. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.